Hello YouTube, so today we are doing episode 2 of my kit theory slash fan kit series, this time designing a kit for the Pyro Archon. So what type of kit should she have? As we know, the Archon kits are usually meant to be the embodiment of the core theme of their element. Venti has the best crowd control in the game, Zhongli has the best shielding, Raiden is the best battery, and Farina manipulates HP and makes healing a lot more valuable. The main theme for the Pyro element is attack, which is shown by the Resonance being a 25% attack buff. Logically, we can say that the Pyro Archon should be an attack buffer, but I want to take it a step farther than that. If you saw the video I made about the problem with shielders, you'll remember that I mentioned that we could really use a Farina for shielding, aka a character that provides a lot of buffing if you have a shield. This would be to make up for the lack of offensive presence shielders bring to teams, just like Farina did for healers. To me, it would make a lot of sense for the Pyro Archon to do this since Fire and Water, aka Pyro and Hydro, are supposed to be opposites, so the Pyro Archon being Farina but for shielders rather than healers makes a lot of sense to me. And thematically, I think it would be it would be fitting for the God of War 2. I mean, if you go to war, you would definitely want to bring a strong defense as well as a strong offense. So that's the general idea behind the kit I've designed for her. With that said, let's take a look at it. So I've made her a 5 star claymore user. She has a high base attack of 351 and a crit damage ascension stat. I didn't bother designing normal attack talent for her because it's not going to be relevant. For her elemental skill, it summons a pyro vishap. If a shield is created while the vishap is active, that shield's max HP is increased by 100% multiplicatively. When your active character performs normal or charged attacks, the vishap will attack, breathing fire in a wide arc, dealing AoE pyro damage, and this effect can be triggered once per second. Scalings, the turret damage is 156% attack, duration 30 seconds, particles 40% chance to make one particle, ICD applies pyro every other hit, and it applies to you pyro. So I made this summon a Vishap since Natland was mentioned to be a land of dragons. I have it buffing the max HP of your shields, because shields kind of have a problem right now, where enemies these days are strong and aggressive enough to break them, defeating the entire purpose of having a shield. So this 50% buff is a multi- 100% buff is a multiplicative buff to the shield's max HP, meaning that it isn't additive with your shield strength, but instead just takes the max HP of your shield after all modifiers such as shield strength, and multiplies that number by, by 2. For instance, say you have a Zhongli with a 17.5k HP shield, now it becomes 35k. And then, the Vishap is also a turret dealing off-field AoE damage, AoE pyro damage. I made it only trigger upon performing normal or charged attacks, so that you can control the pyro application. It applies pyro every other hit while hitting up to once per second, so essentially pyro every 2 seconds. Not too fast, but not too slow either. But I also made it to you Pyro, to ensure that there was enough Pyro for it to en enable things such as Melt Ganyu. The scalings on it aren't too high at 156%, so she likely won't be doing insane damage from our field, but it should still be enough for her to be doing noteworthy sub-DPS damage. Now her elemental burst deals AoE Pyro damage on cast, then if a nearby party member is protected by a shield, all nearby party members have their attack increased by a percentage of the max HP of the strongest shield at the time this burst was cast. If your shield is removed, the new one is not created within 2 seconds, this buff will be removed. Damage on cast scaling is 500% attack. The attack buff is 4% of the strongest shield's max HP. Applies 1 U Pyro, costs 60 energy, cooldown 15 seconds, it has an 18 second duration. Alright, now this is where the kit gets spicy. With the shield being buffed by her skill, it's going to have a beefy HP to allow for a really big teamwide attack buff. 
With the, Zhong with the Zhongli given as an example earlier with a max HP shield of 35,000, this would be an attack buff of about 1406. That's a bit bigger than Bennett, while being team-wide and having a longer duration. With that in mind, the buff might sound too good, but then you have to remember it's taking up two team slots by requiring a shoulder. With that much space taken up on your team already, you probably won't have room for super strong sub DPS to utilize that buff too well anyway. So I think it's balanced. And then the damage on cast is nothing crazy, but should be high enough for it to do some solid damage if you get to vape or melt it. Now mid it costs 60 energy so her ER requirements are high, but not unreasonably high. She would probably have similar ER requirements to Farina like this. Now moving on to our passives, A1, if a shield if a shield that a nearby party member was protected by is removed, create a pyro shield with HP equal to 50% of the max HP of the shield that broke. The shield lasts for 5 seconds, and this effect can be triggered once every 15 seconds. So this passive is just meant to be somewhat of an emergency button in case an enemy actually manages to break your shield. The passive would prevent you from getting screwed over and losing all your buffing. It only lasts 5 seconds, but that should be plenty enough to give you time to create your shield again. And then A4, each time the fish app from the elemental skill attacks, if you have a shield, your active character gains 5 war stacks. These stacks will be consumed upon hitting an enemy with normal charged punching attacks or elemental skill or bursts. No more than 5 stacks can be held at a time. Getting a new stack while you already have some will reset the stack count to 5. These stacks will increase the, the base damage of the normal charge punching attacks or elemental skill or burst attacks by an amount equal to 3% of the max HP of the strongest shield your character is protected by. This A4 is just to give her a bit more buffing, nothing insane, just a bit extra buffing. You might think at this point it's just straight up overpowered, but again, we have to remember She's taking up two team slots by requiring a shielder, with said shielders not really bringing much offensive value of their own, so she really needs to pull the weight, pull enough weight to justify taking up two character slots. And on top of that, she's Pyro, which is a really bad element at enabling things, compared to Farina being Hydro, the best element in the game. So I think this kit would need to have this level of buffing to compensate. Now that covers the base kit, so what type of teams would you use her in? Well, you would use her in teams that already appreciate having shielding, so a Geo DPS like Ito, plus characters that many players can find hard to play without a shield, such as Lenny, Ganyu, Yoimiya, Wanderer, etc. Plus pretty much just any character in general that you are able to fit a shielder plus her in, and they scale with attack, would probably do really well if you want a comfort option without losing much damage, if any. In particular, I could see this elevating someone like Ganyu from being basically obsolete right now to actually being a top tier DPS with a melt team like Ganyu, Pyro Archon, Bennett, and either Layla or Zhongli. Basically, the Pyro Archon would just replace Zhongli there as the off field Pyro source while providing massive buffing. I took the time to calculate a few of these teams. They got some really promising numbers such as 85k Team DPS Ganyu and 78k DPS Yoimiya. You might think that's a bit too high considering they would be completely brain dead to play with such incredibly strong shielding along with that DPS, but I think it would be fine. Incredibly powerful, yes, but not so powerful that we can't have it. I would be very happy to see something like this. But what do you guys think of this kit idea? Do you like it? Hate it? Think it's overpowered? Underpowered? What teams would you make with it? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks. Bye.